I've been born again for more than 30 years of my life. And in those 30 years, Jesus did not change. And I learned more and more about him. Like the Bible says, to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Your righteousness remains the same. You're not growing in your righteousness. You have the same righteousness with Jesus because he gave you his righteousness. But then you grow in grace. The reflection, the outward reflection of the inner influence of the divine power increases in your life. So you grow in grace and you grow in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that's talking more of an experiential knowledge of him. An acquaintance, you understand? An acquaintance. Getting to know who he is in a daily relationship with him. Boy, that changes your walk. Hallelujah. And you know something I love about this whole thing is Christianity is not a religion at all. It is the living, pulsating life of the divine creator in a human person. It is the expression of divinity in humanity. You understand? It is God at work in you. You become different. That's what Christianity really is. When you are born again, it's not a religion that you have joined. Are you hearing me? It's not a church that you have joined. There's something different. When you're born again, you become a new creation. The Bible says you become a member of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. The Bible says you become a partaker of the divine nature. A better rendering says a participator in the divine nature. That means you're participating in the divine experience glory to god i like that i like that i like that i like that see you if you're born again how many of you are born again can i see your hand again great 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 now if you're born again you have to understand you are no longer of the world you are different from the world john cries out he says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. Now, not when we get to heaven. You've got to catch this. He says, Now are we the sons of God. Now, we are not going to be. We are now. Now, that is one reason why you should not be sick. Watch this, watch this. Watch this. In the ninth chapter of the book of Acts, we find Peter visiting the brethren. The Bible says he was visiting the brethren and got to a man named Aeneas. Now, since he was visiting the brethren, that man was one of them. When he got there, this man had been sick of the parsi for about eight years. In other words, he heard the gospel in that condition. He was a paralytic. Lying there on the bed and Peter came into his room. He didn't pray for him. He announced the gospel to him. He said, Aeneas, Jesus Christ makes you well. In other words, if you have Jesus, he makes you well. Listen, Peter couldn't take it. Peter couldn't take it. When he saw that man on the bed, he said, Aeneas, Jesus makes you well. He said, get up. That's the Peter who told us that we are partakers of the divine nature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
He said, we're partakers of the divine nature. John cries out, whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. He said, anything. He didn't say whosoever is born of God. I want you to understand it. He said, whatsoever. Turn into your Bible. I want you to notice it. Come on now. Come on now. Come on. You ready to see it? First John. Chapter 5. Why we must be victors in life. Hallelujah. Why we must be victors 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I hear them in 365 days a year and 366 on leap year. A victor in Christ Jesus. Tell somebody I'm a winner every day. Come on. Say it one more time, I'm a winner every day. Hallelujah. All right, 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. He says, for whatsoever is born of God. For whatsoever. Now, there's a reason why he uses the word whatsoever instead of whosoever. Now, I know that a few new translations try to make it look like it's whosoever. No, no, no. I studied the depth of it. It's whatsoever. He, he actually said anything that is born of God. Why did he say anything? Praise God. Hello. When you live a winning life, you remain excited. I'm excited about life. Life is wonderful. I've had a great life, tremendous life. I've never suffered in my life. You know, sometimes you tell people that and they wonder, oh, so, 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 what is it? Some people have suffered so long, they don't know what it is to enjoy life. You know, they don't know it's possible to have a great life. They've suffered for so long. And of course you have, um, there are people with beautiful stories of um, rags to riches, you know, um, um, defeats to victory. I didn't have enough time to suffer. Yeah, because I tell you why. Because I, I was born again pretty early in my life. So before I would discover the life of suffering, I was already believing this stuff. So I, I couldn't suffer. I've had a great life. And I'm going to just keep having a tremendous life. Why? Because this is the way, brother. This is the way. Hallelujah. 